Mateo Fernandez de Oliveira, a huge victory at the Latin America Amateur Championship. And speaking of Mateo, kind enough to join us, the standout for the University of Arkansas. Always good to see you, my friend. A week or two removed from a monumental victory. What has it been like the past 10 days or so for you? Hi, Steve. Hi, Brandley. Thank you guys for having me. Um, I, as you said, last last couple of days have been um, kind of a roller coaster. I've been all over the place, and I mean, it feels good. It feels good. It, it's, it was a, a huge week for me, for for us Latin Americans. We we have a lot on the line during that week, so finally getting it done, it was it was really it felt really good for me. You were in the mix a year ago, had a great chance to win. What type of pressure is there for you to represent your school, represent your country, come away with a win and know how much that comes along with that victory? Well, I mean, there there's a lot on the line. So, I mean, I think every single player in that field who's winning that week, it's a life-changing moment for him. So, so it was for me. Um, I think my my schedule changed a little bit now. So, I mean, I, I'm looking forward to a great year. Now, your victory, Mateo, gets you into some pretty cool things in the Masters, the U.S. Open, the Open Championship. How are you going to prepare these next few months, you know, for those three big events? Well, I think each of them require a different um a different preparation. Um, we were just getting started with the Masters. We we were lucky to go with a team to play a couple of rounds there last week. Um, I think it's a it's a tough course. There's a lot to to learn. So I I just think the course management there it's gonna be probably the the biggest point to to get ready for. And well, I mean the U.S. Open and the Open are two hard tests as well. So. I will just first think about the Masters and then start thinking about the other two. Now, I'm glad you brought up your guys' recent trip last week to Augusta National because your friend Julian Perico told me that you guys played four rounds over two days. Just just take us listeners through that trip, yeah, kind of what you guys did, what were some of your highlights, uh, maybe something you took from the course that you know you didn't know before, you know, something you learned. Yeah, so it was my first time being there. Um, it was cool to be there with my teammates. So we probably one of the two highlights were that we had a blast. We we really enjoy enjoyed our time there. And second highlight is by for being January, we had probably the best two days of the year. So um, we could take advantage of of the good weather. We got thirty six in on the big course, the two days, and then the first the first day we also went to the par three course. So we play. We played a lot of golf in two days. We we really took advantage of being there. And I mean, one one takeaway of the course is that it's probably the best puzzle I've ever been on. It's um, every shot just makes you think a lot. And if you're not on on the right spot, you're you're very screwed. So um, <laughs> it was good for me to be to be there, just learn a little more about the course, and then. I mean, I have a couple of practice rounds prior to the Masters week that I'm going to take advantage of just to to learn it more and to be ready when, when it's go time. Now, how many suitcases did you bring back filled with pro shop stuff? Did did you go, uh, were, were, were you behaved in the pro shop or did you uh, spend your allowance a little bit? I... I didn't buy all the stuff that I would that I would like to, but I I knew you're going uh, back I mean, though. You're going back. <laughs> I, I, I'm going back, so the next the next few times I'm gonna be there, I'm probably gonna get there and get my my suitcase full. <laughs> See, that's good planning. You don't want the impulsive purchase, although you could get away with it at Augusta National. You <laughs> survey it. You maybe have a little dialogue with friends and family. Say options A or B, because as we know, no cell phones on the property. So it's not like you can necessarily FaceTime or take a picture. So that is smart. I'm going to give you a tip <laughs> of the cap to you there, Mateo. I I'm intrigued with the three majors that, as you said, you're going to prepare for. But you're also part of the Arkansas Razorback team. Where do you think the challenges will be for you to balance major championships, but also know you've got to group of guys counting on you to 
sort of try to jumpstart this team in the spring? Yeah, I mean, the last week and a half after after winning the the lag, it's been I I mean, I had a lot of phone calls, messages, emails, whatever about winning the the Latin American am and but at the same time, I'm I'm just trying to keep myself present and I know I still have one semester more to go. There's a lot to work on. Um, we have a lot to work on with the guys as well. We came out, we came off to a low, slow start on the fall. So, um, but the definitely Latin American arm was good for us just to to get a little a little golf in between starting the the year. I think we all did did very well. So, I mean, we're all excited to to start in, in a week and a half in in Ponte Vedra. How much pressure do you feel as part of a college team? Sort of thought last year you guys were trending in the spring, and you just touched on it. Really, not the best fall for for you and and a lot of your your, your buddies. This team is sort of built to try to do something here in the next four months. What are the conversations like with with Coach McMakin, and and maybe what are the chats like with just the team of saying now's the time, guys. This squad's going to look a lot different in five months. Yeah, so after after the fall ended, um, there there was a lot of different talks with our coaches and with our teammates. We all agree on that we need to work a lot to get to where we want to be. So I think in the off season we all did a great work just getting the group together and and working on some golf stuff that we were not playing as good as we wanted. So. But I think our main goal is just to to be all together, trying to get like to reach the same goal, which is give ourselves a chance at the national championship in May. Now your fifteenth in PGA Tour, you as of right now, you would have status on PGA Tour Latino America um, and PGA Tour Canada. Um, just talk about that program. How fortunate college players are now to have these paths. Uh, provided to them once they graduate and then uh, maybe what are your what are your plans assuming you kind of stay in the same range um, are, are you going to go down back to South America where it's comfortable or are, are you looking for a different route so yeah I mean as you said I think every every college player is very thankful with all the the PJ2 university rankings it's just a, a different path for college players to start our professional careers um, it's not the same to start from the very, very bottom and making yourself up, uh, like compared to starting on a on a different tour. Um, so that's um, that's a huge difference for us, and we are all very, very thankful for the opportunity. Then, I believe my my plan is not gonna change. I think I'm 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 gonna take all the exemptions and turn pro after the Open. Um, I, I would definitely try try Canada over the Latin American PGA. I, I like being home. I like being speaking Spanish and being on my on my culture. But I think um, the Canada plan is is a, a better from all the other perspectives. Um, so yeah, I mean my my plan wouldn't be to go down there. It's just to stay stay north. <laughs> now you mentioned home, uh, Argentina. Pretty big sporting accomplishment about, it's been about a month or so. I want to know, where were you watching the final of the World Cup? Uh, did you, were you at a party? And just kind of just your overall thoughts. I mean, it's it's bigger than any anything us golfers could ever imagine. Um, you know, what, what, what do your, you know, what's it mean to you to be able to see Messi finally get it done, see Argentina lift that World Cup? It was it was one of the of the craziest times of, of my life to be honest. We I mean what they what they've done and what they have accomplished for, for Argentinians it means it means everything. I mean you it, it's hard to, to put into words how crazy it was that day when we won the the final. Um I was lucky to be home. I talked to my teachers, I told them, Hey, this happens once every four years. I need to be back home for for this match, so I flew in to Argentina the day, uh, probably the weekend before to the to the final match, and I just watched it with my friends. After after the game, we 
we all took our like the car to the what we call the obelisco which is like the center of the city and there were was that that big of, video that that we saw that time yeah. lapse video on twitter oh that's awesome yeah yeah it was it was there i, I was there because i'm from buenos aires um probably manu or segundo that they're from cordoba they went to a different place to celebrate but we all celebrated in the end for for the same goal so it, it was crazy because like it was very very inspirational for us like for any for any argentina we they just showed us the argentinians can do can do big stuff and i mean the way they did it, it was it was honestly very inspirational now I have a hard hitting question for you, Mateo. Messi or Ronaldo? No, I'm just kidding. I no. I know what you're going to say. Uh, no, but uh, ha, don't you let me answer, please. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think would be a better golfer? And have you met Messi before? I never met Messi before, and if I would have to guess a better golfer, I would say Messi. <laughs> oh, of, course, uh, short, of course, short game. His short game is probably his short game is <laughs> yeah. probably pretty wicked, right? I mean. Yeah, he's, he's I mean, more tactical. I would go Messi over Ronaldo. If any question you ask me, <laughs> I'm very basketball? biased there. Hoops, basketball, mm, Messi. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of soccer, how often did you play growing up? When did you realize, okay, maybe that's my limit and I'll let Messi represent the country on the pitch? <laughs> I used to play soccer since a very young age until I was like nine, probably. Then I switched, started playing golf. But I kept playing soccer with my school friends and and just like in our school um, school academy would be like soccer academy until I was twelve or thirteen. And since then, I just kept playing golf, and that was the only sport I I did growing up. Who's the best? Who's the worst? If you guys back in Arkansas maybe had a fun game, who can play? Who do you want on your team? And who's the guy that's going to be the last one picked? Well, <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> that's a tough question. But I, I would say just counting on the South Americans, I would have Manu on my side against Julian Segundo. <laughs> <laughs> We might have to get cameras out for that one. Uh, Manuel <laughs> post injury too. I mean, post injury for for Manuel, he still wants him on his team. Before we let you go, uh, Mateo, you said you got a lot of texts, calls. What's the most surprising person that reached out to you or message you received that you sort of look at and say, "Wow, like I can't believe they contacted me." Actually, I I. I don't think I got like crazy messages, but I, I got a lot of, well, some, some tour players that reach out. And I mean, I, I feel very good because I want to be there. I, I want to be with them playing on tour. So um, I'm just looking forward to have great weeks, I, like playing against them and trying to learn from them as much as I can. Um, they are all great role models for me. So, I mean, I, I felt that was very cool. Well, you kicked off the new year in fantastic style. Mateo Fernandez de Oliveira, congratulations once again for winning the Latin America Amateur Championship. Always good to catch up. Keep it rolling in the spring, my friend, and uh, we'll see you down the road soon. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me.